Well, a very warm welcome to everybody who is joining us at home for our service of morning prayer. And welcome again to everybody here. We'll be using the white service books. The second page in has the responses uh, for morning prayer. And it has some of our songs at the back as well. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you, we have done evil in your sight, we are sorry and repent, have mercy on us according to your love, wash away our wrongdoing, and cleanse us from our sin, renew a right spirit within us, and restore us to the joy of your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to keep a few moments of silence as we remember God's presence here with us. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Well, now we're going to have the lighting of our very first Advent candle, so I'm going to ask Bell, so perhaps and Nina to come up to the front and we'll light a candle and have a prayer to go with it. Blessed are you. I've moved a bit. 
Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors. To you be praise and glory forever. You called the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfilment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your cross, a lamp to our feet and a light to our heart. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. And now we're going to have our children's song, uh, which is Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. And you can find the words to this at the back of the service books on page 16. And there are some actions to go with this. You will have noticed that musically we're a little bit reduced this morning. Um, so I will remind us of the actions before, uh, before we sing it. Um, this one we know, uh, but it goes uh, like this. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. And it goes, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. As ever, the actions are entirely optional. You don't have to do them, uh, but you can do them if you uh, want to. Uh, but let's stand and we'll, we'll sing this through together. Twenty-seven to thirty-three. 
and you can find it in the Blue Pew Bibles on page 993. Page 993, Matthew 24, 27 to 33. And if, there's, if there is not a Pew Bible near you, feel free to grab one from somewhere else. There's plenty around. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Uh, we pray that you'd speak to us through it with clarity and power and give us understanding and hearts ready to receive all that you say to us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Advent Sunday. Advent is that season when, as well as, of course, looking forward to Christmas, we also, for four weeks, think about what people sometimes call the four great last things. Heaven and hell, death and judgment. And particularly, the Lord's return. That promise that Jesus made that he would come back again. And it's particularly the Lord's return that we're going to think about today, his advent, which is what the word um, of the season comes from. It means Jesus coming to us. But I am well aware that Jesus' return is not a particularly easy or comfortable subject. Not generally, and, and not even among us, perhaps. For many people, the idea of Jesus returning again is just not credible. They just can't believe that such a thing would happen, particularly after such a long period of time, 2,000 years. And so they dismiss it. For others, they think, well, maybe it could happen. Maybe Jesus might come back again, but it would probably be subtle and secret and hidden, obscure. Maybe Jesus being born in some back street somewhere, like the first Christmas, that we might not notice. Blink and we'd miss it. We might not know at all. And others just think the whole subject is so uncomfortable that they would rather skip Advent and go straight to Christmas. We all love Christmas. But the return of Jesus is a really important part of our Christian faith. It's not one for us to skip over. In some ways, it's as important, arguably, as the resurrection. And we believe it for similar reasons, because we have God's word on it. You see, just as Jesus promised 
that he would die and then after three days rise again, and he did. So Jesus also promised that he would return again, and he will. And both the resurrection and the Lord's return fall into that category of things that just couldn't happen unless God makes them happen. So if this morning we are comfortable and confident believing in the resurrection, then we've got no reason not to be equally comfortable and confident believing in the Lord's return. And here in our reading from Matthew 24, Jesus tells us how it's going to take place, what will happen, and he also tells us something of how we can respond to it, how we can make a difference in our lives today. So let's jump in and have a look at what Jesus says about this great event that we can look forward to. If we start with verse 27, and we'll work through the, the verses, the first thing we see is that this is an event that we will see, that it will be clearly visible, not secret, not hidden, not obscure, and not like the first Christmas at all. Quite different. Think instead of a massive lightning storm. Perhaps you've seen one of those, where the, the thunder rolls and the, the lightning appears right across the sky fizzing and, and sparkling and, and clearly seen, Jesus says that his return will be as visible as that kind of electrical storm. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever we are, wherever we're standing, Whatever part of the world we find ourselves in, it will be visible to all. And just to underline the point, Jesus makes, um, uses another illustration right out of the desert. We might remember how Jesus spent some years in, some days in the desert. Well, if an animal dies in that arid, barren region, then you will quickly know about it. You may not see the body. But if you look, look up into the sky, you will see the birds of prey beginning to circle above it. It's unmistakable, clearly visible. Jesus says, wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Both of those illustrations, lightning and birds of prey, have things in common. They're in the sky. We have to look up. They're visible, and they're visible from a great distance. Jesus' return will be, in that sense, unmistakable, unmissable, clearly seen, not hidden away. But it will also not only be visible, but be dramatic, cosmically dramatic. In verse 29, Jesus says, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Imagine a pitch black night, without the faintest hint of light from the sun or the moon. The only illumination coming from wave after wave of a meteor storm as the stars fall from the sky. All of us would be clearly and unmistakably aware of it. This is not an event we will miss, even if we do blink. Visible, cosmically dramatic, but also wonderful. Wonderful, because then Jesus will return. 
we'll see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And then Jesus adds in some wonderful words of comfort and encouragement, consolation, that he will gather us to be with him. He'll send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they'll gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now that word elect is the Bible's special word for describing those whom God has chosen before the beginning of time. Everyone who believes and trusts in the Lord Jesus. And if we're trusting him in our hearts, then on that day, we also will be gathered in. The Lord will send for us, we'll be taken to be with him. We'll be going home. Sometimes people say to me, Is, isn't that the day of the Lord's return? Isn't that a scary day? Isn't that an unwelcome day? Something we should worry about and not want to see. But actually the Bible tells us it's wonderful and glorious and great and safe and secure for all of God's elect, for everyone who trusts and believes in Jesus, for all of his own, for you and I today, if we're trusting him. It's not a day to, to fear, it's a day to look forward to, to look forward to in the way that we look forward to coming home when we've been outside in the cold and the wet, when we've been away from family whom we long to see and we are reunited with them. It's like the best of days, like birthdays and Christmas rolled into one. Because we're being with the Lord Jesus. We're seeing him and we'll be with him for eternity. Visible, dramatic, wonderful. But how are we to respond? Well, Jesus wants us to be ready and to be expectant. And he uses the image of the changing seasons. He says, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. We can tell, can't we, when spring is turning to summer because we see the leaves on the trees. Well, in Advent, and at least this part of the hemisphere, we might well say we can tell when autumn is turning to winter. If you've had your eyes open this last couple of days, you'll have seen those glorious autumn colours replaced by that sudden expected snowfall. If you know me well, you'll know that the sight of snow fills me with a great and inexpressible joy. Not as great as the joy of our salvation, of course, but, but a fairly strong joy, uh, nevertheless. And as soon as we look out, we see the snow. A little bit of a blizzard just um, yesterday. We see the snow and we think, okay, I need to get out my winter clothes. I need to get out my, my boots and my scarf and hat. I've got an open fire, I need to get in that firewood, perhaps I need to get my Christmas shopping ready. It's time to prepare. Time to be expecting more of it. Time to be ready. And if we can be sufficiently alert and tuned in to be ready for the approach of winter, then we certainly should be equally alert and ready for the return of the Lord Jesus. He says, when you see these, all these things, you know it's near. And Jesus is talking about the signs that will precede his coming, not just the darkness and the stars falling and, and him appearing on the clouds, but, but the things he's spoken of earlier in the chapter. Wars and famines and earthquakes and elsewhere the Bible says there'll be plagues before the Lord returns. And I think we've seen a few of those, haven't we? 
It's certainly a constant through human history, but every time we see something like that, we should sit up and think the Lord's return is near. But the Bible also says we won't know the day or the hour. If somebody comes up to you and says they know it's going to be a particular month, a particular day, don't believe them. The Bible says we won't know that. So how can we be ready for something if we don't know when it's going to arrive? If we don't know the day? I think the only way is to be always ready. To be ready every day. To live every day as if the Lord may, may be coming back. We can be ready by putting God in that first place in our lives. Giving him the priority he deserves. By putting time aside to pray. And to worship and, and to spend time in the Word, And to live that life of love that Jesus calls us to. And when times are hard and life is difficult and challenging, and when strains and sorrows come our way as they frequently do, then it is the thought and the promise and the assurance of Jesus' return that gives us hope. Because we know things are going to get better. That the Lord has a day promise where he'll wipe every tear from our eyes. When there'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. When the old order of things will have passed away. When we will be going home. Home to be with the Lord. Home in glory. Home with him forever. Now let's pray that that hope will sit in our hearts. And encourage us as we wait for his appearance. Oh Jesus, we thank you that you have promised that you will, will return in glory. And that you are always true to your word. Help us to fix our hearts on that glad and glorious day. To know that a better day is coming. And to live each day trusting you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Oh. Well, we're going to respond to God's word by joining in the words of the creed, and you'll find those on the second page in of the service books. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In a few moments we're going to pray, but before we do so we're going to sing song called There Is a Day, a song that looks forward to Jesus appearing. It's on page 25 in the, the song books. Um, so let's stand.
love to pray. joyful expectation of his coming to our end, we pray to Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Come to your world as king of the nations, before you rulers will stand in silence. Come to the suffering as saviour and comforter. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. Give us with all the faithful departed a share in your victory over evil and death. Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great glory. Lift us up to meet you, that with all your saints and angels, we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom, on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So as our Saviour has taught us so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, power, and the glory of Jesus, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to sing our final hymn. It's in the Orange Songs and Hymns of Fellowship, number 332. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. A lovely. Advent him. So let's stand to this. Place. <clears throat>